recording. Recording there. Okay. Over here. Start recording here. Start. Oh, shit. I didn't change my... Uh... Oh, I got I to gotta, gotta take care of something. Fuck. Oh, we're going to be late. It's okay. <laughs> Update my titles. You don't want to come out as like a Trump broadcast or something. <clears throat> okay, so we'll see. <clears throat> you don't have um I don't know. You don't, uh, are you on Twitter? Me? No. Okay. Chris. I'm just on Instagram and Facebook, but mostly Instagram right now. All right, so that's on. I'll just use your name for the title. That's no big deal. We're a minute late. Damn it! So this is on. Start recording. We're already recording here. I'll have to edit that later, I guess. And then back to this. And then fine art. I got your Facebook page up. I think transitions. Okay, we're good. Let's record in there. And we should be live there. All right. Um, check the stream. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Jim? I'm good. I'm just uh, showing your your dates off here for your Saturday showing at the Butter Gallery, Collingwood. It's uh, no definite time, so it's just come whenever you want, I guess, eh? What time do they open till? Just gallery hours, probably 11 to 5 or something like that. Okay. Here she is. Uh, thanks for your time. So cool. I was, I was going to tell you, my open usually when I've got bands is I pick up bars and bands. Not girls. I pick up musicians and bars because that's where I see them and then I want them to come on my show because they're talented. I pick up visual artists in the sushi section of Farm Boy. Farm Boy, such a classy joint. They're saying, hey, pull, <laughs> pull up your pants, woman. <laughs> if it wasn't for the kids, maybe I wouldn't have caught your eye because one of them was trying to ride the front of the cart and of course I'm obsessed with children, you know, so that's the one. And then on the way out, I got to shoot them a dart about, yeah, nice. Uh, Patriots new, jersey. Nice Patriots jersey, buddy. <laughs> I just shot him an Eagles, Eagles all day, every day on the way out. So just for the, the people that are watching and listening, this will be up on podcast later, but uh, just take some time to introduce who you are, kind of who you came, well, not who you came from. You can get into that as well, but uh, how you got here and what you're all about. All right. Well, I'm Chrissy Nickerson. I'm a career artist at the age of 41. I'm a painter, um, all around painter, primarily landscape painter. Um, that's the niche I, I fill in a contemporary art gallery. Um, yeah, painter, artist. Always have been, been painting since I was a child. My parents have been very supportive of my art career, sent me to college all over the place. Um, did a year in, in Europe, um, sent me to an Austin boarding school in Europe as well. Tried to do some studying at the University of Calgary, basically dropped out, it was silly. But graduated from NASCAD, Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, with two degrees, a Bachelor of Design major in environmental planning. So I've got some environmentalism in there and a Bachelor of Fine Art um, major in painting, basically. And um, that's who I am as an artist. Um, I'm also a single parent of two young boys, eight and 10. I used to not want the art community to know that I was a mother because I felt that maybe it would hinder their idea of my ability to produce and to maintain a career. But now I'm actually, um, it's, it's a big part of my practice and, and how I practice. And one of my favorite quotes um, is by Picasso, he says, when inspiration finds you, it better find you working. So, you know, as a parent, I've kind of lost the, um, the luxury of just painting when I want or staying up all night and painting all night kind of thing. But uh, now I've probably got a little bit more of a, 
a work ethic in regards to the studio time and when I can fit that time in. And, and um, yeah, the boys, the boys are very much part of that. And I think at eight and 10 right now, I'm really finding, starting to find my space as a career artist again. And um, being able to build more relationships in the artist community and develop, get that momentum behind my career again. So that's exciting for me. And I, I think it's a, a good thing. So you're in Port Toulouse now. Yeah. Your show's in Collingwood this weekend on Saturday. I'll put the details back up again. How long were you in Port before you left? Did you grow up here? I grew up in Port. So um, grew up rowing, did, doing the Henley thing all those years. Rode for St. Catharines. Uh, rode for Winston Churchill. University. Where'd you go to school? Is that where you went to school? Sir Winston? Yeah. Oh, Winston. so you're a smarty pants too, huh? Ooh, scraping the... That's where, all the, that's where all the bright kids go, Sir Winston. Well, they don't, they don't offer general classes, unfortunately. So person oh, okay. like me, you know, you just got to try to maintain, you just have to try for that 70% average. Right? So, and then, so how long were you here before you left town? I left at 17 and um, uh, have been away ever since. I've traveled a lot around the world and it's been awesome and been mostly spending my last uh on and off, I've spent a lot of my time in Alberta. My grandmother had a house in Alberta, so I also um, strongly relate to the Rocky Mountains, and it's a, a major home base for me. That's where my children were born, and where my home studio is, and really where I make my bread and butter, um, painting the Rockies. Um, but it's a, uh, I'm honored to be, so Butter Gallery in Collingwood just picked me up, and um, we're starting a new relationship together, and. I'm super excited to be able to invest in painting my homeland of Ontario again and to be able to spend the time uh, painting the lakes and, you know, stuff like that and Canadian Shield and so it's nice to be home. What did you do before you were an artist? Um, I think in grade four, I used to play, I, my mom had us all learning how to play an uh, instrument. And in grade four, she finally let me quit violin. And on Saturdays, um, I would be dropped off at the SPCA to clean kennels for hours. And after that, they dropped me off at Chris Katzkan's apartment. And I painted with her for the rest of Saturdays. Who is she? She's this cool lady. Um, I don't know why we haven't looked her up. Chris Katzkan, all Ks. Um, she was my first inspiration as an artist as a kid here in St. Catharines. She had this sweet downtown studio apartment on, I don't even know what Main Street is, downtown St. Catharines, that street right before the... St. Um, Paul? Maybe, probably. Right, right downtown, single woman at the time. Um, super cool check. I, I don't know, Chris Katzkin. I, I don't know why I haven't... But as any artist, you know, I've had 50 billion different jobs from forestry to wait, like to bus girling to oh, okay. drill press operator from um, grocery stores. Um, oops, I don't know how to make that sound not happen. It's all good, don't worry about it. Yeah, just uh, a bunch of random. I think most artists, if you ask any um, true artists there are uh, lots of serving and uh, labor just just whatever jobs pay the bills so how old were you when you finally were able to say okay that's it i'm a painter now that's all i do for sustenance to make income to concentrate all my energies um i uh left a boyfriend and and started well tried to leave a boyfriend and got into uh, forestry so it was a commercial thinner for coastline forestry and maritimes for a while. And okay. I only would get Mondays off um, to go do laundry and banking and whatever you needed to do. And um, finally I took some time off that job and started painting. And I said, I'm a painter, I, I don't wanna, I really don't want to do this. And so then from there, I ended up going to the BAMP Center in Canmore to uh, do a, a residency at the BAMP Center, an independent residency. And then again, I had that realization after doing a bunch of house painting for um, 
a good friend of mine. I've worked for him over the years, like over the la over a decade. And every time I paint a full house, I think to myself, like, it's so unhealthy for me to be using my ligaments, holding big brushes, being so repetitive. I, I should save my body for me and paint for myself. And um, I've always known I'm an artist. It's just cash flow that um, has made me have to, to do labor sometimes, right? Or, or sometimes I just want to hang out with my neighbor and I will go back to house painting. Usually around Christmas, I'll do a house painting job with my neighbor because it's you know, we catch up on each other's lives and listen to loud techno and it's fun. Yeah. You know, I, I, I like your reference to save my body because I've just, I've just lately been, well, I'm going to be 52 next week. Uh, but my mm -hmm. office chair that I'm sitting in right now is trying to murder me slowly. It is murdering me. And, um, you know, I, when I, we met yesterday, I was telling you yeah. how much, how, how much, how much trouble I've been in with my body screaming at me. Sciatic right now has hobbled me for weeks. Uh, I got an hour walk in today, but most of the time, like how do you stretch something that's that sore or how do you walk through something? And so I was just bent over today and I feel like 108 years old and I'm like, my, I've disabled myself from my job because my job is sitting here, but Stand up, just, yeah, exactly. I just noticed the other day that I'm putting my, I'm crossing my legs under my chair and grabbing one of the chair legs. So it, yeah, yeah. you wonder why you can't walk when you stand up. So, but anyways, um, you're due mostly, I, I'm going to show one of your pieces that blew my mind yesterday when I went through some of your stuff there at the, at your makeshift um, studio where you're set up at your parents' place. Uh, so cool. But that piece was like, oh, I'm, I can't talk about it and then not show it. I'll just put it up right now. Here's the uh, website that's for the date. Saturday. Are you showing the transition? Uh, out of the Woods. That's in Collingwood. And then uh, this is the, ch you know, let me see. Yeah, now I'm showing it. Now this is, <laughs> it's busy. And like I said to you yesterday, this is a piece that I don't have to use my imagination to see something different every time. There's so much layers and detail and, and you built in almost the, what, what's that abstract kind of, uh, anyways, tell me about this piece. Cause it, it really, it set me off yesterday of all the pieces that you went through. I'm like, wow. Uh, are you showing it right now? Yeah. Yeah. We're in the background. Oh, I can't see it. So, um, are you talking about transitions? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the paintings, I, I'm primarily a landscape painter, so I was invited to, to join this painting, uh, a group show about uh, globe, associated with global water futures, where they, um, you know, are largely investigating global warming and how to interpret that through art and how to have conversations with the public and you know, it's an interesting thing to, to try to have that conversation at the dinner table with uh, your family, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that painting um, was developed through me listening to a bunch of podcasts and um, talking with my dad and hanging out with my girlfriend, Maya, and just having discussions. And so I, I wanted to create a painting full of drama and full of information. And... Um, I think I, I did that. And uh, I did a few other pieces in concert with that one. Um, never thinking that that would be the painting that I ended up showing. Um, and then at the last minute, I put um, that quote from Genesis, um, God said, let mankind rule over the birds and the bees and the, all the fish in the sea. And I painted a self portrait. Um, and I, I put that on there in a really crude, bold um, way um, to kind of yell at you, you know, like, yes, it's a painting. It doesn't have to be pretty. The conversations might be hard. And, and there's just so many issues in there from to have that conversation, whether you're coming from a scientific point of view or political, political point of view or religion or what tax bracket you're in or trying to maintain. And there's just so much um, so I just wanted to capture some of that drama and, um, throw it into a painting and I had a blast doing it. 
and unfortunately what you can't see in that piece is it's attached to a, a big projection screen. It's probably a, a four by um, six foot piece or something like that. It's on auction through the town of Canmore's art place right now. Um, you could probably find that if you just went to artsplace.com or I'm not sure what the thing is, but through Canmore's arts place in, in Banff and Canmore, Alberta. Uh, raising money for the local arts uh, community center there and yeah that painting was a blast and that's the fun part of being an artist is getting to investigate and, and learn about whatever you want at the time and and react to it right um figure out what you want to say talk about it start the dialogue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite verses and uh, i'm so politically and i'm, st I'm so not like literate with the Bible. Um, but 126, like somebody asked me, what's your favorite Bible verse? And, you know, I, so much of everything comes from that verse. I, I always confused me because, you know, if you're a believer, my first question was, what do you mean, let us make man in our image? I thought God was singular and he was the first and he was always there. So <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean us? <laughs> you know? I think it's um, a power of three, the, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the... Yeah, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. So yeah, it was interesting that that's uh, the, what you picked out of there, but... Uh, the yeah, we, we, how, yeah. how to go up you know, for auctions how does that work the auction um, yeah like is it open for 30 days or something i think it's open yeah minimum um okay. our place every year where i come from in canmore has a a party called creative combat and it's uh the, one of the parties of the year it's a blast we all dress up in some type of way and there's a dj and every artist paints for 20 minutes at a time and then there's this huge hurrah and people make it to the next round it's it's a, it's a kind of, it's like a big show. And uh, this year because of COVID, it's not happening. So they're having an online um, auction for uh, a bunch of the local artists that usually participate. And all the money raised from the paintings that we've donated will go to Arts Place, um, right? Cause they do a bunch of community planning and it's an important, um, it's an important establishment in Canmore because Canmore is so sports driven. I think Canmore has created most of the Olympic athletes out of Canada or something like that. Like our sports community is huge. So it's nice to be able to provide arts to the young people and a space for, you know, the theater kids to go to and do stuff. You know, you don't have to always go cross country skiing, you know? Mm -hmm. How has COVID affected you personally? Well, it took the wind out of my sails for sure um, because I had stuff lined up to do as everyone did. And um, so that sucked. But uh, as a homeschool teacher, I've you know caught up on my grade four math and going to move into grade five math and uh, stuff like that, learning how to cook bread. But I think in the end, it uh, was a blessing because um, in the end, I ended up taking my children to Vancouver Island to do my last artist residency in July and I was able to be really productive and they were able to um, respect that a little bit and it's it's kind of and then this right so now I'm here in Port Toulouse and they're able they're doing learning at home through the school system so I'm able to take them with me and paint regionally around Canada and so that's that's really good and I'm interested to see if like how this will work um, with their studies, um, and then maybe we can continue to do this throughout the year, um, which I hope we can. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and I've had two open, openings during COVID, um, which were cool. Um, I do some writing. Some of my writing seems kind of dark. I don't, I don't know. It, it might not be the tone for this interview, but um, I've, I've had two openings during COVID. Um, one was called uh, Yellow Jacket, where I talk about um, some of that stuff. Um, what, like, what is that specifically? What writing are you referring to? And what's Yellow Jacket? Is it a like a spoken word performance? No, I just write these artist statements. I, as a kid in college, you're always told to write these artist statements, like explain what you're talking about. 
now when someone asks me for an artist statement, I just kind of write whatever I want, how I feel, and that's it. So um, during my, my, one of my last shows was called Yellow Jacket because it was all yellow and black. And I was trying to um, uh, paint for me, paint for the painter. Um, not worry about what sale, sells and really try to uh, develop my own mark making and expression. And um, I ended up writing, it was right after uh, that gentleman, um, that man died uh, with the police. And the whole Black Lives Matter movement um, jump got up and running again. Um, so I wrote uh, a piece about palette and what's in a color and what's an association and how that makes you feel and stuff like that. So, um, and we ended up having a pretty successful opening. The gallery owner uh, ran it by appointment and we still got to drink wine and it was great. Hmm. Um, yeah, so, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, great. What do, you, do you ever like just not want to paint? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that yeah. happened in. Uh, uh, that's what I've been struggling with, like content. You know, I, I don't consider myself an artist, but you know, I have enough artists in, and they're like, Jimmy, like what you do is an art. That you're, con you're like you're an artist. I'm like, okay. And then, you know, COVID hit. You know, logistically, my life didn't change all that much because I think I've been social just distancing for years. You know, because you know, whatever. I, totally. It's just I. Yeah, I'm not just not social um and good for some people that way yeah and then i have a hard time sitting down and producing creative work and then and, well it, it's not that i when i sit down to produce it that i have a hard time it's just, i don't want to sit down it's the motivation's been unbelievable and you know i didn't think covid, well, COVID hasn't changed my life much i you know i've been social distancing forever but i did notice i started drinking more because oh, yeah. like what the hell you like what do you do like so and Cheers. so i think we're all yeah thank you i think we're all struggling with and, and, uh, sometimes i think it's late and like we don't really we don't it's not as obvious to us what is happening right like i had a, a guy on yesterday that's an anti-mask guy not terribly political but activist right and um shoppers drug mart yeah, that he was pulling up the stickers off the floor at Shoppers Drug Mart, and he caused a scene. He filmed it, and it went semi-viral, not completely viral. And today he's he's protesting outside of fake news 610 CKTB and the Standard, and then they're marching to City Hall. But he, you know, he was talking about the only reason he's doing this right now is because he's got a five-month-old boy that I got to meet, Zephyr. What a beautiful, like, you know. The kids love me. As soon as I look at them, they seem to engage. And so he says, my kid loves new people. He, he, he'll just start giggling and laughing and spitting on you. And it was, it was awesome. But this is this guy's, Sandor is his name. This, Zephyr is now Sandor's complete purpose in life. So, yeah. and, you know, I saw him today do a broadcast out front of the studio. And he was talking about, my child is five months old now. You guys want to mandate a mask uh, mandate for another seven months. Do you know how detrimental that is for my child not to see smiling faces when I take them out anywhere? Like, yeah. I don't think we really are present. And I don't mean to drag this into politics, but I don't think yeah. we're, we're completely present as to the unintended uh, consequences of some of these actions. Oh, we just go, well, we'll just all wear a mask. Everyone falls in line and you, you don't really get, you're like, wow, yeah. I don't see faces anymore. I don't hug my friend. Well, I hug my friends. I'm a great hugger. So, but you know, uh, I did an event the other day as MC and Juliet Dunn, one of my favorite people. She's like, I wish I could hug you. I have like, you can hug me. Like you don't get COVID from hugging. <laughs> Just don't kiss me. <laughs> but I don't think we're really present to the complete impact of it all, you know? So. Sure. Well, there's definitely going to be fallout or moving forward or tons of different things that come from this for sure mm. um do you want to hear one of my uh little written things sure you got it handy yeah it's right here oh you do have a belt on you weren't fibbing <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, this one's called, I don't know, it's probably not, I'll just share it just because you like the rant, right? Okay, all right, cool. How long uh, is it? My gallery in Alberta didn't share it, but whatever, we'll go for it. All right. It's called um, Lockdown, Slow Down, Show Up. Okay. All right. You know, I'm going to mute my mic. Feel, okay, sorry, you ready? Go ahead, yep. All right, I need to feel relevant to myself, to my career, my commitment to participate, to moving forward. I have always wanted more, more representation, more money, more reason, more attention. Then I fall off the horse and need to find motivation again. When I lack passion, I look to curiosity. How can I paint again? Do I really need to sell? Do I like landscape painting? Yes, I like landscape painting as an outdoor enthusiast, as a mother, as an environmentalist, artist. Yes, I'm a landscape painter. But first and foremost, I'm an artist. Stay true to oneself, they say. It's my party and I can paint what I want. Will you show it? Will you talk about it? Is it relevant? Where will I go from here? Lockdown, The Rolling Stones, Neil Young, Crazy Horse, Nora Jones, all of them. They all, all new relevant work during this time. Me, I stand wondering, where is my studio? Am I really a full-time school teacher, meal planner, house cleaner? Where are my mates? Where is my participation, my mom momentum? I am torn between creation and destruction. I want to remove all my old art from sight. I just want to pour paint down the walls. I have no patience for detail. I have no desire to struggle. I just want paper, immediate satisfaction. Who can satisfy me? Another bottle of wine, another rude awakening, another scheduled Google Hangout and deadline. Where is my relevance? Landscape painting, I need more, I need more time, I need my time, I need my own space. Where is Peter? Where is Sophie? Come over, let's get high. <laughs> so yeah, it was tough for sure. And then, um, and then, you know, people just, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Well, it sums up a lot of your feelings there. And I think a lot of us can uh, sympathize with them. It's such a, such a different time now. I don't want to use that new normal garbage because I refuse to believe that there will be a new normal. Um, yeah, we'll see. I think, we get, I think my, uh, my favorite saying now is we've been duped. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's so appropriate for all the things that I see in the world anyway. Anyway, how do you, uh, talking more about your motivation and kind of, you, you touched on it in that piece with, that you just read, you yeah. know, how do you draw the balance between commercial, I have to do certain things to live, to be saleable, and pouring paint down the walls just to make it look different and say that's art type of thing? Like, how do you do like a, it to make different just to say that it's art? I, I want to feel relevant to myself and my own artist community to have interesting conversation about what is art, right? I want to be able to grow as an artist through challenging myself to, to see how can I make new marks? How, how can I uh, stay interested and curious about the medium of paint, you know? Um, and then um, commercially, um, you know, landscape, it's, it's sellable, it's relatable, people can, feel good and comfortable, comfortable standing in front of it, right? There, to be an environmentalist, you don't need to um, stand there and give people information. You could even just paint um, a lake that's been ruined by acid rain and um, title it something with reference to that. And then someone can look it up and educate themselves on, on what acid rain is and the effects that has on the environment. And, why scrubbers are important for, you know, steel coat. So, um, yeah, commercial, I, I do definitely struggle with my role um, there. And um, I don't know, sometimes it just makes me feel like a kid. You know, the gallery is the, the parent and they have these expectations. And then, um, and then there's me who's 41, I'm not a kid, you know. But, um, you know, I still need the gallery system 
Uh, I don't have a dealer. I'm not big time. So, you know, I, I, I need, I need finances. And if I'm going to commit to this as a career, um, I need to respect the gallery system, right? So that they can show me the money. What's that look like? What happens when you go big time? Like if you had to write your, the, you know, the Hollywood story of your life, how, how does it pick up from here? And like, when you hit the big time, how's, how's that change? Well, maybe we can talk in 15 years and hope the best. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, some of my friends, they're working really hard. Like Pascal Lulet from Kenmore, Alberta. She's working really hard and I can see she's, painting multiple shows a year and she's traveling to said shows and she's she's the bread well I don't know who's making the money in that family but I presume Pascal's working really hard and um yeah I'm sure there's a lot of hard work in there um cheers to Pascal and other hard work and I'm working hard too I'm not saying I'm not I'm just uh more gallery representation I would love to have representation in Toronto someday I would love to have um, more reason to come home and, and go on more canoe trips and paint them, right? I, I would love to uh, have representation in Halifax again someday. Um, go, go out on the Atlantic. You know, a more reason to <coughs> what I see and express how I feel on to paint and, um, and share that with my, with my voice, right? Mm -hmm. How much do you find that your, uh, your, the, your mood or your uh, environment or your, I don't know, what do you call it when it's an extended mood? Like you're in a little bit of a, how does, can you see that in your work? Can, and yeah, like, absolutely. is it like a flavor that you can say, oh yeah, here's my dark day. And you see this landscape is kind of depressing. Other people might not I see it. About, you know? I just wrote about that too. Uh -huh. Well, first I'll say one thing. Like, um, I think artists do kind of run on, well, I, I, anyway, I don't know about all artists, but I can relate to um, a little bit of that manic and uh, low, like, you know, you, you get going really hard on anything. Yeah. And I, the real discipline is when, um, I think as an artist, is to be able to go back into that painting you did when you were upset or whatever and finish that painting oh. later. I think the difference between someone who might, you know, who's got severe depression or um, some other mental illness wouldn't be able to go back into a body of work and, and finish it. Mm. But I think we all have that. And I, I wrote a little bit about that in this body of work that I did because I, I painted it um, in such a condensed period of time. Um, yeah, I, I, wrote, I wrote about it in this paragraph here. Do you want to hear this paragraph? Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Um, so this is about Out of the Woods and this body of work that I, I did in response to this canoe trip we just did. The work has had multiple stages of growth or setbacks. I am trying to honor the Algonquin School of Painter's Approach, the Canadian tradition of landscape painting as I do, but also in my own way. How do I make it my own? How do I stand out as a painter at a new gallery? The struggle is real. Phase one, paint. I tried to be realistic, local color. Phase two, I started to lose it. Phase, phase three, I lost it. I learned some sabotage. And now in my final week, I am I'm where I am now painting a combination of traditional landscape and Chris Nickerson. So hmm. uh, there's ups and downs to everything. Yeah. Sometimes I, I paint, like I sabotage and paint stuff out and other times it comes off the brush, no problem. Now, what do you talk more about the sabotage? What do you mean specifically? Um, well, um, I had a painting about this size on the wall the other night. And it was after dinner, after the kids went to bed, and I was just so frustrated. And I just mixed up a load of paint and I just painted it black. Wow. And then um, at the same time, I grabbed this other painting and I really blocked out a bunch of it into black, black as well. And then that night I couldn't sleep. I was just like, oh my gosh, I just threw out 48 hours. Of really? And then, you know, and then I let it dry and then went back into it. And I'm, you know, I'm happy I did that. So 
I don't want to just show a bunch of paintings just because I painted them. I want to show paintings that I'm proud of and I want to be able to show them as a, a body of work to my community. Because as I said- what if, you're, what if you're too judgmental or too hasty or you're just in a bad mood that day and you missed something and painted over something that would have been completely beautiful the next day or 10 years out or something like that? I'm sure that happens, but aren't we mm. all our own worst critic, right? Yeah, no, for sure. And um, it's like critique, you know, you could have like Wanda Ellerbeck, she's, she gives me the best critique ever all the time. I really appreciate her I mean you know I appreciate I appreciate her as a colleague and if she comes in my studio and she's like I don't get this and I think this you should completely take this out of there um if I take that out of there it's it's my choice that's not because she told me to take it out of there mm -hmm. right it's and that's the same thing with your own um thoughts right mm -hmm. and so, didn't somebody say like if you're not second guessing yourself you might be crazy Mm. So those of us who are harder on ourselves, at least we're checking in. Right. Maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I, I, it, I'm, I'm fascinated by the whole mental process of it because, you know, we, I think, well, you were showing me a piece yesterday that I think you, you may have painted over, but you know, some of the greatest yeah. creations ever, artistically ever put together you know am i wrong in this that you know it's like a mistake they didn't finish it and then it's like a timeless work of art that's priceless because you know it's like the statue that fell over or whatever so go ahead rephrase that into saying um uh you're saying a happy mistake but someone could say okay well say that master or whoever right let's call them a master mm -hmm. you know made this painting super duper fast and someone could say, well, how is that worth all that? Because you can see that it's just some happy mistake or happy moment. Um, I would argue that that quick 20 minutes or two hours or whatever um, is all in response to their, their career of 20 years. And everything that brought them up to making those mark makings that day are in response to their life on the their career and like all the choices they've made. So I would like to give them more credibility than, than to call it a happy mistake or something like that. Mm. You know what I mean? No, I do completely. But uh, yeah. no, you were showing me a piece that was around the corner from you right there on your left that had a, like a, no, up near the front oh, of yeah, the okay. garage to your left no it was anyways there was a transition there was a piece of oh yeah cool there's a top of the one that you're showing me that's in the front like in front of you to the to to your left that's got a i don't know it's did you paint over it or something it's like it's coming through it's bleeding through it's got something else oh yeah there's like tons tons of this oh is that it there yeah okay over. now what happened there a few paintings in here where um yeah i just took the roller and uh is, is that the one you painted black I did paint a bunch of this part black, yeah. <laughs> black. And then um, I'm calling this these diptych fail, right? Diptych Dip, fail. Yeah, right, um, right. Okay. Right. So they're, th those are works in progress. So oh. they're going, they're not going to stay like that. They're <sighs> going to be revolutionized by Midnight Tonight. Really? Oh, because they're going to, that's probably, obviously. I have to pack thinking. everything up uh, tonight or tomorrow to, to take to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, before 4 p.m. Yeah, so that's why I'm painting right now. So I just, I'm, I'm basically just in touch up mode. Okay. It's, with the exception of uh, a few paintings that need serious attention. Yeah. So, how, when you're finished, prep for the showing. When am showing. I going to be finished? Yeah. Um, tonight, I might have to paint some edges gray tomorrow, and then uh, my bow has to photograph everything. And um, yeah, I'm close, no problem. Cool. And obviously you're showing to, so that you can sell stuff, but is that typically at the gallery or at the showing where people buy stuff or no? Uh, yeah, openings can be a lot of fun. Um, we're not having a super formal opening this, this time around because COVID, but yeah, a, a really good opening, make some sales, have some drinks. 
Um, but a lot of, you know, if, if there's a client list, I don't, I'm new to butter, so I, I have no idea how it's going to go, but okay. um, I, I've heard they've already made a couple sales from my work. They sold nice. uh, the one this morning. So that's a good Nice. News. What's the commish? What do they take from you? They take what they deserve. <laughs> You're very <laughs> diplomatic, very diplomatic. And you know what? I was thinking, um, I, I went for a long walk today. I'm trying to work my, my back out here and uh, just showering before I came down here. I'm thinking how cool it would be to interview the kids. Uh, I got to get them uh, the, maybe one at a time, but uh, <laughs> that'd be awesome. I want to play that video because I, I seriously watched, I shared it on Facebook. I shared it on Twitter. I just said, who did this? And um, I've, I must've watched it 15 times today. Oh, so I just, great. You got a couple of cool comments too that uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is the time to break the momentum, but I can see by your sure. face. Well, that let's, you're... let's finish it up with some good old Monty Python. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to play that now and then I'll bring you back to talk about it and then uh, I'll cut you loose. We're coming up. Uh, well, you got 40 minutes in you so far. That's pretty good. So this is, uh, well, let me, you introduce it. Tell, tell us all about how this thing came to be. First of all, I'll set up, up by saying it's a reenactment of Monty Python's The Black Knight, which is one of my favorite scenes. I, I'm surprised I don't have it memorized. I've seen that scene like hundreds, hundreds of times. So your kids reenacted it. Uh, tell us who all started in it and who's all responsible for this masterpiece that's already got a couple thousand views since July or something. Well, we did it in the end of July. It's called The Black Knight, Monty Python reenactment. It was Arnold's, um, my uh, grade four student's final English project, but he has a gift for memorizing lines. And, you know, who knows, maybe he'll be an actor someday. He enjoys... He can recite full, um, what's that guy's name? Weird Al Kovic. Mm -hmm. Full songs, like 10 minute songs he can go for. Uh, it's incredible. And um, yeah, so he, he really wanted to do that. He said it was his favorite movie at the time. Um, I helped him with the costumes. Uh, Bo Brandon Evans, it's on his YouTube thing, um, channel. Um, he did the editing with Arnold and uh, yeah, don't, don't cut out before the credits because I think they're really great too. <laughs> and then a bunch of neighborhood kids. and uh, Oh, really? Uh, Sorry, yeah. say again? Neighborhood kids and what? A bunch of neighborhood kids. So my son's the uh, King Arthur and my youngest son is the Green Knight. And then uh, some of our neighborhood kids that we've hang, been hanging out with during COVID. Um, and and uh, that's just the creek right behind our house. That's our backyard. Wow. Yeah, Kenmore is a gorgeous place to mm. visit. So. Awesome. Okay, yeah. let's yeah. Uh, check it out. Yeah. Uh, where am I going? The Black Knight. Oh, we can go full screen here because nobody's... Yeah, go uh, for it. Everyone's going to want to see it full screen. Okay, we're rolling. Oh, hang on. Hold up. There we go. Now we got some sound. Cut your mic. Cut my mic. So is it going to be full screen? Are you watching the thing over there? I don't get to see it here because I didn't see the page on either. You cut my mic. There we go. Oh, okay. No, I'm not. Uh, you're, you're no, I'm not watching it. I'm just listening to everything. Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm doing okay? Yeah, I think I'm doing okay too. Oh, yeah, you're doing fine. Can you hear me, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> <Hello. laughs> You cut his mic too. Good. Good. Yeah. Pretty fun. <laughs> oh, that's where he dies. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could see it. You can't even see it. I wonder how many people are. I don't know, we can probably watch it later. Oh, sweating. 
Okay, I'm going to be done with this painting when I get off. It's hard to do a consistent blow talk like that. <laughs> it's easy to talk to. Cool. Yeah. Sweating on gross. <laughs> no, that's okay. Are you painting the whole time? Um, yeah, well, I mostly okay. just painted CN 2020, and then I oh. touched this up. Okay. And now I'm touching this up, and then, uh, Sweet. that's going to be it for this piece. <laughs> that's good enough, eh? Do you like the lily pads? All right, Rob well, Benny, what can I put here right now then? Have I signed that up on this? Um, why don't we switch this? Or no, I don't do that. That one looks better in the light. Yeah, I think that's a good painting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the sound effects just make it hilarious. <laughs> They're surprising. Oh, They're dude. surprisingly like satisfying. Especially when there's like you can hear the blood gushing and stuff like that. <laughs> That's a good show. Yeah. <laughs> um what's wrong? <laughs> 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 I'm killing myself over here. <laughs> oh my god. I gotta stay through the uh credits here. <laughs> wow. Huh. I might have to watch that a few more times today. <laughs> oh, okay. We could turn the volume down now. It makes the parents happy because they're like. Sorry, go again. It made my dad happy. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I made my day today. Oh, we still got credits. I don't want to cut. So, oh, there you got some props too, Chrissy. Nice. <laughs> I was definitely involved. Catering. <laughs> <laughs> Stunt assistance and special effects. <laughs> awesome. Okay, here we go. Canadian Fine Art. Uh, CN Fine Art is the website. CNFineArt.ca. Butter Gallery, Saturday, this uh, weekend, September 19th in Collingwood. Collingwood, yes, exactly. Oops, wrong. Oh my gosh, I don't want to go here. Um, where are you? Oh, there's transitions. That's my piece. I'm going to have to make a, a offer on it. And there you are. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for um, having me. I'm and nice for being open. I mean, I'm sorry, go again. It's nice to meet you again. Yeah, no. And I appreciate your openness. Uh, you know, the guy that calls you out of the blue and says, uh, you know, you shouldn't really drive around with uh, your uh, website on your vehicle. And you're immediately, you're like, oh, sorry, did I blow a stop sign or something? I'm like, no. I just, uh, I just oh, uh, give right. your son a hard time and, and farm boy. And you're like, oh, you're that guy. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> oh, everybody's you know. been shopping at farm boy. That's where all the celebrities go, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, good luck this weekend. Uh, hey, give my love to the, the crew, the kids, and, uh, and your man, too. That's a man. He, just, he made my day with that video. So Great. you never know where the people are coming from. They're going to make a difference for you. So you did. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Talk to you later. All right. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye. Woo! <laughs> well, that wasn't so difficult, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah, that was good. All right. Was awesome. Easier than I thought. I was worried I was going to say, like, wrong things about art history and no, nope. they get all academic on us. You're good as gold. Right Let on. me know if you ever want to get the word out on something else. I'll pick you up again. Okay, sure. Um, how do uh, like?
like, so was that video saved? Can I go watch it later or share it? Yeah, uh, we should be offline now. So it's right at the top of my, oops, hang on. I'm trying to get you out of here. I want to make sure I got this. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's on my Twitter feed at the top and it's on the Facebook feed at the top of that as well. So if everything went well, I, it looked like I had a feed. It'll be on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, and you can watch it wherever you want. Okay. So can I share it on YouTube? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Well, I'll do that. All right. right. I love you. Good luck. All right. You too. Talk to you Peace out. Ciao. Bye.